NFL Week 3 is here, and this is your DraftKings first look lineup. What's up, guys? My name's Kevin Allen, a.k.a. The Geek from DFS Army. And Week 2 is in the books. We're moving on to Week 3. We actually had a pretty good Week 2 here on the first look. We talked about and actually used Kyler Murray in that lineup. And we talked about Daniel Jones as a possible play, and we kind of got off of some of the bad plays that were a little bit chalky early in the week, the, the Mahomes and Lamar Jackson plays that really just didn't make sense as far as payup options. So coming off a pretty strong week, we had the Mason core play the one big miss from last week of course was cooper cup he just got hurt got hurt what are you gonna do that's a rough one but debo samuel came through a lot of what we thought would happen did happen and especially the offensive explosion in arizona so we're learning that home teams in high total games are offenses to target and we're gonna take a look at some of those but before i jump over to the game tiles reminder we're extending our special promotion ten dollars for a week of nfl dfs army nfl full coverage using promo code crunch i know a lot of people out there got burned by one of the optimizer companies that kind of shut down and kind of disappeared, so to speak, and people are scrambling. We want to give you a shot at using the Domination Station Optimizer here from DFS Army. So promo code CRUNCH will get you a week of DFS Army for just 10 bucks. You can check out our Optimizer. You get full uh, access to everything we do for NFL. I think you'll love it. Okay, let's jump right into the game tiles for NFL Week 3, and um, we'll go through some of these. And again, we're looking for home teams with high totals, uh, high team totals, uh, ideally, or away teams that are also favored, or games that look like they're going to produce quality fantasy results. So start off the, off the bat here. Here, Giants at the Browns. That's gross. 38 and a half point total. Not a game I think we should be messing with a whole lot. Bears at the Colts. Two young quarterbacks. Neither looking that good right now. Both are a little bit questionable. I'm certainly more interested in Richardson than I would be in Caleb here, but 42 point total, you know, just passing interest. Texans at the Vikings. Man, I, I'm starting to think the Texans. So the Texans are one of those offenses that I think are not quite putting it all together, but the Vikings are. So this is a sexy game. 46 and a half point total. I think we're going to have interest in both sides of this one this week. This will be one of the games to potentially build around. We'll have to see what's going on with Justin Jefferson's sort of injury. But beyond that, on the Texan side, we also have to see what's going on with the running back situation over there. A Mixon got hurt in game, then Cam Akers came in and literally shit the bed. Like, he fumbled. He's probably not going to be seen again. So, we'll see what happens with Houston and their running backs. Eagles at the Saints. The Saints are one of those teams that I've been talking about that I kind of, I think they might be for real. Like, you know, I love to shit on Derek Carr. I've been doing it for years, but, you know, hard to ignore the first couple weeks what they've been doing over there new offensive coordinator sort of a new approach and we have to adjust our mindset we can't get stubborn and caught in the past yeah have we faded Derek Carr for the last like five seasons or four seasons every single week yes has he been chalk a lot of those weeks yes have we avoided those bombs which every single time it was yes but are we going to be stubborn about it no things are changing things are changing you know we're not going to be stubborn so um Saints interesting Eagles as well we'll see what happens with AJ Brown but you know there are definitely pieces on both sides that I will be targeting here I really like that game. Broncos at the Bucks. I'm liking what I'm seeing out of this Bucks offense and defense really, but I'm not sure this game stands out very much with the 39 point total. Packers at the Titans could be one of the worst, ugliest offensive games of the week. Oh, wait, hold my beer, says the Chargers and Steelers. We also have a shitty game with the 36 and a half point total that you should avoid all players from. All right, I will listen and we will avoid all of those players. Not to make it even worse, but the Panthers at the Raiders, this game has all of a sudden gotten interesting. Um, Bryce Young benched. One of the faster benchings of a number one overall pick that you're generally going to see. And now maybe there's some interest in some of the offensive pieces on Carolina. Oh yeah, that's right. I even kind of like taking a bet on Carolina here, plus five and a half. Andy Dalton's way better than Bryce Young. It's not even close. Miami at Seattle. This is scary. No Tua. Miami without Tua is not good. Hashtag not very good. So stay away. Now the game of the week. There's two games that stand out. This one is the best of them. The Lions on the road at the Cardinals. 51 and a half point total. Cardinals. Three point home underdogs. A little surprising there. So one of the things that I've been thinking about is in terms of Arizona, are they for real? And I don't mean the offenses look pretty good, but the defense has looked really good. You know, if you think about it, in week one, they held the Bills down pretty well offensively. And in week two, they absolutely dominated the Rams. The Rams, you know, lost Cooper Cup at some point, but they weren't looking good before that. So this is one of those spots. Like, are the Cardinals good on defense now? Has it changed? Because last year they were punching back. Interesting, right? But Detroit offense is really, really good. And even a great defense going to have a hard time holding them down. So yeah, this game should be a lot of fun. And that is one we will want to build around this week. Ravens at the Cowboys. Another spot. Cowboys coming off the loss. Uh, teams usually not as bad as they look when they lose. Ours, uh, Dallas look terrible. Oh my gosh. Cowboys suck. Never play them again. Blah, blah, blah. They'll be fine. And then you got the Ravens also coming off the loss. Not impressed. Not impressed at home with the Ravens. They don't have the killer instinct. Again, the same thing that I always criticize them for. You got to get in the end zone. Got to put, put seven points on the board. They keep kicking field goals. And it comes back to burn them. Allow the other team back in the game. That was a crazy game. 49ers at the Rams. Rams are a team in trouble. 
trouble. Offensive linemen dropping like flies. Puka gone. Cooper Cup gone. No offense to speak of. Who are they throwing it to? Demarcus Robinson. Not a good scene there. So, man, seven and a half. That line is moving and it keeps on moving. Let's see here. Eight o'clock. So that'll do it for the games. And another nice little thing this week is we're back to like a 12 game main slate. Last week, I think we had 15. That's a lot of games. We're also going to have a two game Monday night showdown primetime two game slate. Love that this upcoming week. So looking forward to that. All right, let's get into the NFL week one position by position. We're going to take a look at the salaries of the players here. We're going to take a look at who stands out from a value perspective, who stands out from a high floor perspective, and who are some of the players that we want to target each of these position groups. So let's start with the quarterback position at the very top of the list. In terms of the salary range, it is Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson has massive upside every single week. It's just a question of how much they need out of him. I think this is a spot where Lamar can shine. So I'm not crossing my list. I'm not crossing him off my list this week by any stretch. No way. Same thing with Hurts. This is a week where, hey, these guys stand out. These guys stand out. I already talked about the Saints game. Saints can score. Dallas can score at home. These are the road teams. But if the Eagles are going to keep it close, Hurts should be a big part of it. We'll see what happens with A.J. Brown. But if he's not there, we know we could stack him up with Devontae Smith. We know we have, uh, let's see what, you know, maybe Jahan Dotson, but definitely Dallas Goddard. Like those other key names will get more targets if Brown is out. I like that spot. I like a lot of these spots. C.J. Stroud. Sure. Why not? He doesn't run the football, but it doesn't matter at Minnesota. This is a good game environment. Kyler Murray. Sure. As well. Yeah. You can play some Kyler. One of the things I really like about Kyler this week is, you know, Detroit's been pretty good against running backs. Um, They absolutely stifled Rashad White last week. And therefore it increases the likelihood that when Arizona is scoring, they're doing it via the pass. One of the biggest problems with Arizona has been, you know, just how good Connor has been together with Murray. Connor usually getting a touchdown in these games. If they're only getting three, Murray only kind of gets two left to throw for. That's not quite enough. So I like that spot with Kyler Murray, but let's continue to talk through the quarterback. So I think, you know, I think Dak is acceptable to go back to him at home next week. No one will want to be on that after the kind of dud he had this past week. Realistically, he was not, he didn't do that bad. You know, 14, only threw for one touchdown. I think Dak is going to shine and maybe in this game. So I don't mind going right back to Prescott there. Jared Goff, the other side of this game, he is favored on the road. So he's very much interesting. Mayfield, I don't know what the Bay, the Mayfield bandwagon, love it, but it's probably coming to a bit of a close here this week in a little bit of an easier game at Denver. I think it'll be a lot of defense and I don't really see Tampa as a team that's going to lay it on an opponent too hard. Pretty no. Derek Carr, really? Derek Carr. Got to consider, right? I'm not going to rule it out. I can't rule it out. Can't. No, 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 no. Sam Wise, is it fair to call him Sam Wise the scared anymore? Sam Darnold? He's looking pretty good out there. So I think Sam Darnold will be somebody to keep an eye on this week as well. And that's about it. So it looks like this is the kind of week we will be paying up a little bit. We're going to hang around this high mid six to early 7k range. I don't think there's too much benefit here in a sliding down the salary scale because I am not liking what I'm seeing. Um, Maybe again, outside of a little Derek Carr. Ugh. No, I can't do it. But maybe, but maybe. No, but maybe, but no. But outside of that, there's not a whole lot good going on. So we're going to pay up a little bit at quarterback. And for my first choice, I'm going with Kyler Murray. Let's go. All right. Running back position, NFL week two, McCaffrey still out. Barkley, good spot. You know, he's great. Kamara coming off the biggest, maybe one of the biggest games, you know, not of his career, but up there. How many touchdowns? Three touchdowns. Four touchdowns. It's crazy. He's going to be super chalk. You know, spots really good. So he's fine. Let's see. Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, could get it done. Kyron Williams, not in love with that. A-Chan, you know, a little sketchy without a quarterback. Don't trust Mixon's health. Jameer Gibbs, definitely someone to consider. Josh Jacobs got it done last week. Uh, you know, we talked about pairing up Jacobs with Green Bay defense, and that worked out really nice. I mean, he didn't quite get enough to win you the tournament, but he certainly made value or came close to cash value, and, and the Packers defense was really good. Connor, I already talked about it. You know, I love Connor. I play him every week, but you know, he's great. Look at all these great scores. Can he get it done against a really good rush defense with Detroit? I'm not doing that with Murray together, but it's certainly interesting. Another interesting situation is uh, J.K. Dobbins, man. He's getting it done too. So it looks like he is emerging as that top dog. You know, first week, 10 carries. Last week, 17 carries. You know, Dobbins up to like the 70% workload uh, rates for the Chargers. We'll keep an eye on him. But one name to plug in against sort of a dead Rams team is Mason. I played Mason last week. I told you not to worry about him at his price. Now, we did learn something about Mason. He was 5K last week. He got the touchdown. He got the 100-yard bonus. Even got a reception in there. Ends up certainly making value got the red fire emojis on your screen but we also learned last week that mason is a little more dangerous of a player than we thought or kind of proved that he is a little more dangerous in the sense that they don't throw to one target both of the week so that kind of creates a fairly low floor if he doesn't get the 100 yards or the touchdown so we're going to be careful with mason but i'm plugging him in there i, I don't mind 
I like Jameer Gibbs as well here. I wouldn't mind Jameer against Kyler in this sort of back and forth affair. Uh, Montgomery, similar situation though. I, I prefer Gibbs a little bit, but Montgomery's there. But the next name that I'm going to, to go to here is actually Tony Pollard. And the reason being, Tony Pollard has a super high floor, but more importantly, um, Tajay Spears got hurt in last week's game, came out of the game. He's got that big Q tag. If the Titans are going to keep up in this game, it is going to have to be through the run because Will Levis absolutely stinks. So give me some Pollard. I think we'll get plenty of work in this in this one and a little vintage Pollard performance. Fine by me. Talk about some other spots here. Zach Charbonnet, if he gets another full start, he looked pretty good last week. Got, you know, five targets, 14 carries. This was a great performance. I don't mind playing Charbonnet. Hell yeah. Charbonnet, 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 Charbonnet. If you're from Montreal, it's Charbonnet. But if you're in America, Charbonnet. Unless you're in Louisiana, back to Charbonnet. Um, Aaron Jones, yeah. You know, yeah, I guess. Board against the Giants, certainly playable. Didn't do a lot of uh, damage last week. I'm curious to see if Cleveland had a different running back get any kind of carries. Let's see. Oh boy. Oh, that's not good. All right. Take Ford off the list. Either. So, all right. We got to investigate what happened. Why did Dante Foreman play so much this past week? What's going on? So that takes Ford out of the mix for me. No need. But but like I said, I like Rashad White against Denver. Denver defense, not very good. I'm going to plug them in here as the third RB. Um, continuing on though, Devin Single, D sizzles. Um, pretty good game this past week as well. Almost got the bonus. Didn't catch a ton of patches last week, but almost got there. Uh, Devin Singletary will have big weeks this season. Demir White, Najee Harris. Yeah, down here, it just starts to get bad. Najee Harris has had a pretty good game. As Jalen Warren is recovering, he's getting a ton of work. Zamir White is now effectively in just a split with Alexander Madison. It's no good. Is it Madison on the Vegas, on the Raiders? I think so. Uh, yeah, there he is. Warren, Ty Chandler. No, no, no. Chuba Hubbard, maybe, but no. So yeah, I think, again, we're going to be hanging around the 6K range at running back as well for NFL Week 2. Let's shift gears for a second and take a look at the defense position for NFL Week 3. And taking a look, as you know, with defenses, the first thing I'm looking for are the cheapest ones we can find. Last week, we liked the Colts, but later in the week, we got on the Packers. A lot of that had to do with the line on that game being much better and sort of uh, closer than we thought. And of course, reality came together. Packers was really good. So we want to try to get be in the cheaper zone for running back for, for defenses most weeks and this week being no exception. So let's take a look at DraftKings. Defenses from the bottom up. Rams, no. No Cardinals, no. I, although, and, but no. Um, Detroit, too good of an offense to mess with. Uh, Panthers at the Raiders, uh, I'm going to pass on that one. Vikings at home, yes, they did well against San Francisco this past week, and they are a legit defense here. I mean, you know, they're averaging double digits each week, but I'm going to pass on this one as well. Houston, a good offense, and I think they'll continue to get better um, each week. Just, uh, they've been a little, I feel like they've been a little rusty, but they'll get better. Miami, no. Broncos at Tampa, no. Saints at home against the Eagles, no. Chicago at Indianapolis, maybe right? So we're looking for two things when we're playing a defense. One is, of course, like an actual good defense in the league, but also going up against turnover prone offenses. Uh, the Colts are turnover prone for sure. But the one I'm going to go with here are the, the Titans at home taking on the Packers. Now the Packers squeaked away last week with Malik Willis in there. He looked fine, didn't make too many mistakes. And maybe Malik Willis is good, but I think more likely they just got a lot of running game in there and kind of, how would I put this? Kind of lucked their way into what was a, a game that played out the way they needed it to. I'm not sure they can keep that going each week so i could take a shot here on the titans at home other live defenses let's see if i had to play another one yeah here we go i mean tampa at home actually i might like this one even better i'm gonna switch it let's go tampa at home against the rookie bo nix you know it's 3k it's a little more expensive we've got to save we can but it can get sort of a good offense and actually a quality defense against the rookie at and where the defense is at home i think that's the better place so we're gonna spend a little bit here 3k to go with the box defense against the rookie bo nix i'm um, just scrolling up through the rest of the defenses here uh, maybe cleveland at home looks interesting definitely the colts at home against chicago you know at this point you have to really see caleb as a bit of a turnover machine until you know anything changes packers on the road at the titans playable as well so a few spots here pittsburgh at home as we go up on the list they become a little more viable certainly seattle at home against whoever the hell miami is rolling out that's going to be a top play as well this week if we want to pay up so there are some pay up options for sure charges at pittsburgh probably not but yeah no raiders looked a lot better Better when it was going to be Bryce Young. And then of course, Cleveland at home against the Giants. You know, it's Daniel Jones. You never know which version shows up. So, um, but we'll go with the Bucks on this one. But we also identified a few other ones that look pretty good. Shift gears to the tight end position, and then we will end it at wide receiver. There's a couple of these tight ends I want to talk about here, but I do have one that really is popping for me in my model. But let's start at the top. Trey McBride, fine, good, always good, always fine. Sam Laporta, also part of that game. McBride coming off a big game, only six targets though. Very efficient, as has the Arizona offense been. 
in Laporta coming off kind of a rough game, only three targets, and he is not looking like so far has not been worth paying up for. He's averaging 5.9 fantasy points per game. That'll change, but for now, been pretty bad. The guy who stands out for me, and it's not the best value at the position. We're not going to plug him in, but I must mention Brock Bowers. Nine targets last week, eight targets the week before. Absolutely looks the part of the stud. If you didn't draft, he has already risen to TE1 overall in dynasty formats. He looks like the real deal after two weeks. I mean, it's pretty shocking that a tight end can do this so quickly, but I think we are seeing the emergence of a superstar tight end that's going to have a long storied career. 5,400, eight, nine targets. You cannot beat that it's a good matchup it's a good situation against carolina carolina could be scoring in this one i love it i love everything about it very playable mark andrews so everybody thought it was isaiah likely after week one 12 targets nine reception the next week only three targets for him they're trying to get mark andrews more involved he's getting yeah got five targets week two i'm not touching these guys but certainly they are viable i would say andrews more than likely but the guy i'm going to go with here is for now is dallas goddard and again reserve the right to move my way up or down but early sort of lean is going to be goddard again assuming that that AJ Brown is out. Those are the games where Goddard is going to get a little bit more attention. So I'm going to be interested in plugging him in there for 4,600 on DraftKings. Some other names. Let's see if any other pop out names uh, exist here. You know, maybe a little Parkinson. Uh, Schoenmacher did really well last week in the absence of um, Ferguson. So if Ferguson's out again. I'll be very interested in Schoenmacher uh, this week at 3,300. We're going to need salary savings because we didn't find it anywhere else. Now, usually as the week goes on, we find like that wide receiver that that's 3,500 that we could plug in to make, you know, studs and duds type approaches work. But this is early week. This is first look. And that person has not necessarily presented themselves as of yet. So it's going to be a little bit tricky to fit it all together, but I have some ideas. So let's get into the wide receiver position for NFL week three. Starting at the very top, CD Lamb. Sure, why not? Didn't get it done once again this past week. Still got a decent score. Got a, had a big play in there. Needed 10 more yards. Need another reception. 10 more yards, one more catch. And we're talking 19 goes to 26 or 25. A little bit better. Still, we're looking for scores in the mid 30s for CD Lamb in order to sort of pay off this price point. I'll certainly pair him up with Dak, but no, I think the Dallas offense bounces back. I love Justin Jefferson. I like the play here against Houston. I plug him in. Q tag, not going to let it bother me too much. Jefferson's been getting it done, not on a ton of targets on high efficiency, but this Houston game, I think, can lead to offensive fireworks. So I'm going to be very interested in that situation. No to Reek. Uh, Amon Ra coming off what, 19 targets or an insane. Yeah, there it is. 19 targets last week. Wow, right? Um, Got a Q tag on it. We'll have to see what that's all about. Cooper Cup probably not going to play. Again, don't know the story with AJ Brown at this point might not play. I'm assuming he won't for the purposes of this breakdown, but you know, that'll change. Devontae Smith at 6,900 with no AJ Brown is very viable. Matter of fact, I would be looking to plug him in, um, assuming there's no AJ Brown. So I'm just going to we'll leave it as a placeholder here. There's a few others though that I very much like in this range. I skipped over Nico Collins, who I think is a spectacular play. Skipped a few names that I shouldn't have. Nico Collins, spectacular play. If we're, if we're building a Murray lineup, it makes a lot of sense to consider Marvin Harrison Jr. here as well. We'll stack. Got to stack him with someone. Marvin Harrison. Uh, I got Devonte Smith there again with no AJ Brown potentially. That's a nice spot. So either one of these looks pretty good. Nico Collins seems to be the guy for Houston. I think he's going to be the consistent one. I think he is the WR one coming off of another big game. Ten targets, eight receptions, crossed 100 yards, got the touchdown. Monster score for Nico, averaging 25 points per game so far on the season. That's spectacular. This is a high price for Zay Flowers. He is not the kind of player that normally produces value against the 7K. That's a 28 point um, requirement of a score 28 plus not what he's normally doing dj Moore, i don't i don't see where caleb is able to support uh, a wide receiver right now for again for a 30 point game dj Moore just not going to be effective until caleb williams gets better chris godwin though i wish this was a more interesting game environment because godwin so this is really important to understand godwin his role has changed on this team he looks to be in the cooper cup role um you know the uh, the coaching staff and the offense coordinator coming from the sean McVay ram sort of school of offense and and they've said that Chris Godwin is our Cooper Cup. So let's accept it. I think Godwin is playable every single week, regardless of matchup. Again, this is not a great matchup. This is a low scoring uh, game environment. So it's not a sexy game environment, but Godwin is live for sure. Neighbors also, he's really good. Always playable. Not a good game situation, but certainly playable. But I, I'm probably not going there. Chris Olave almost got the touchdown last week. The uh, touchdown would have helped a little bit. The breakout is coming for Olave. It's coming. Pittman, no Cooper. Until we see Deshaun Watson do anything, you know, I have a lot of 
Cooper exposure in season long. So I'm hoping he's going to turn it around. Waddle, no. Ridley, no. Um, Reed, no. Jameson Williams, yes. Right? 11 targets last week. Nine targets week one. He's looking good out there. Arizona, a team that is beatable uh, via the pass. Uh, so I don't mind Jameson Williams here if we need to keep these salaries down in, in a sort of a more affordable zone. Let's see if anybody else turns up here that is even playable. I want to mention Jackson Smith in Jigba. 16 targets last week. Hello. Is this the new normal? I hope so. It's good to see. Um, so Jackson Smith and Jigba, I would say, finally had what could be considered a breakout game. Great. Rashid Shahid, you know, another player, man. 18.6 points over the first two games. He's looking pretty good. Starting off well. Can't complain there. If we wanted to try to take advantage of the Rams injuries, I guess it would be Demarcus Robinson. Um, you know, another player I wanted to mention is Deontay, uh, is uh, Quentin Johnston, who didn't get a ton of targets, but had a big score. Is he, you know, back? What's going on here for the Chargers? Is it Lad McConkey? I think Josh Palmer's not that good. And maybe Quentin Johnston's starting, starting to get it, starting to click. We need a salary saver, though. And I'm going to plug in Greg Dorch. He didn't do anything last week, came down off of his cloud from the week before. But we need a salary saver to go with Murray. So I'm going to plug him in here as my sort of open-ended salary saver in this lineup. Open end. Need a pay down option. That's our guy. I want to mention Deontay Johnson. Now, he hasn't done anything yet, but the Panthers have benched Bryce Young. And now Andy Dalton is going to be starting. Dalton is a much better quarterback, and he's just much more capable of hitting a wide receiver like Deontay. Deontay is the best wide receiver on the team. And I think he this is a spot where he could do a little bit of work. So I'm going to plug in Deontay Johnson there. And we'll close this lineup out with, with the full stack of Marvin Harrison Jr. with Kyler Murray. Now we have 400 salary left over. We could spend it wherever we want. So it's a decent little starting approach for this week. I don't mind, for example, if we wanted to get to, oh, I like this, maybe a Jameson. No, can we get to Jameson Williams? I thought we could get there. No, we'd have to pay. We'd have to find a little more salary to get there. But I think we'll be able to do stuff like that this week. So just a little starting point to get you off and running for NFL week three. Um, guys, if you enjoy this video, do us a favor here. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We've got breakdowns coming out all throughout the week, showdowns, tournament tactics on Fridays. You're not going to want to miss it. And of course, if you'd like to check out DFS Army, we are doing a special. We extended it for a second week because it was super popular last week. One week of NFL, do the NFL weekly. Promo code CRUNCH gets it for just 10 bucks. That's basically the price of a cup of coffee. You could check out the Domination Station Optimizer. You could check out the exclusive NFL Research Station. No one has anything like that. Our matchups tool. Amazing stuff. Great tools. Cheat sheets for every single slate. Breakdowns for every slate. Projections and ownerships for every single slate. All the tools you need to be successful at DFS right here at DFS Army. NFL Weekly promo code CRUNCH gets it for 10 bucks, including our Optimizer, the Domination Station. Good luck, everybody. I will see you next time.